All right, so let's take some notes on Diego Velazquez's painting titled Las Meninas. And Las Meninas, it actually translates to the ladies in waiting. So for context, uh, you can see the artist right here. Here he is painting this painting. And then I wrote down the size. So if you want to know the size of it, but this is believed to be the painting that he's actually working on. Um, the artist is a court painter to the royal family in Spain. So that is a really high position for an artist to have. So the idea that he's painting his, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so context, he's a court painter to the royal family in Spain. And it's therefore this was painted for the king. Um, so the king is the patron, he commissioned the painting, and then this hung in the in the king's personal study. So therefore we know who the audience, the intended audience of this painting is the royal family, is the king and the queen. All right, so content, what is being painted, it's the princess. So here's the princess in the center, that's the king and queen's daughter. And she's, as you can just say, attended by others, right? There's uh, maidens, a dwarf, her governess, other attendants, we can just say attended by others. And then again, make sure you include that there's the self-portrait along with the royal family. And that is showing his important, his, his status. It's like a social status. He's not just a craftsman. He is the royal painter. So it's promoting the value as an artist. And where have we seen a self-portrait before? Where the painter painted himself looking at you, the viewer. That was Raphael who did that at the School of Athens. And then we're gonna to continue to see this again and again with self-portraits as we move on through art history. All right, so here's an idea of the scale, the size of this painting. Um, so if you were standing there, you're the viewer, right? And you're looking at the painting, who is looking back at you? So think about the idea of gazes, right? All these people looking at you. So this kind of helps give us clues as to the meaning of this painting. So art historians have derived, you know, interpreted this painting in different ways. And one of the clues that they have is that the viewer, whoever is the viewer, is demanding the attention of the princess, who's an important person. And then a few other glances are looking up at the viewer. So who's the audience? Right, it's the king and the queen is the audience. All right, let's do a little bit of comparisons with the Arnolfini portrait. So if you compare these two, how are they similar? How are they different? What do they have in common? So if you look in the background of both of them, they have a mirror, right? The Arnolfini portrait. Um, so context-wise, it's believed that the Arnolfini portrait was actually in the palace in Spain when Las Meninas was being painted. So it's very likely that Diego Velazquez, the artist, actually saw the Arnolfini portrait. Um, I should have put the years on there. Anyway, so it's believed that he would have been influenced by this painting. So if you look in the background, there's a mirror in the Arnolfini portrait. And the purpose of the, of the mirror you know, there's different interpretations, but it's believed that it is showing witnesses to this event. Who are the witnesses there that are watching this event, whatever event it is, take place? And this is showing us that. It's also giving us the life of Jesus, and he's dead on the left, and then he's alive. No, he's dead on the left, dead on the right, and then alive on the left, which also leads to interpretations of that painting. But then if you look at Las Meninas, there's also a painting in the background. And so we can tell this is a painting compared to the canvases on the wall because it is brighter, so therefore it's more reflective. There's a beveled edge that goes around it. So those are clues telling us that this is a mirror and it's actually reflecting the portrait of the king and the queen, which puts the king and the queen as witnesses into this portrait or they are, they are in this portrait. But if it's a mirror, then it's actually reflecting the king and the queen, which makes us, the viewer, right? If we're standing there, we then are the king and the queen looking at this, which makes sense because that's who this was painted for. That's the audience. And now we also have an artist painting himself along with the king and the queen. Again, promoting the status of the artist. So we need to add this into our notes. The king and queen are reflected in the mirror on the back wall. Therefore, the viewer is looking at the painting from the perspective of the king and the queen. 
that is the interpretation that art historians have come to based on the clues that we have just discussed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to practice formulating this into an argumentation uh, free response question. Remember, you're going to have six free response questions on your test, and one of them is going to be about making an argumentation. So I watched one of the AP videos, and I kind of took these ideas from that video to help explain it. So the skills they're wanting you to show is skill 8a, articulating a defensible claim that argues how art historians derive a particular historically valid interpretation. We're going to talk about Las Meninas. And the other skill is then using specific and relevant evidence to support your claim. You can't just say the claim, the viewer is looking at the painting from the perspective of the king and queen, because I know that. You have to give the clues that we just talked about. All right, so the way to do this is you first brainstorm your evidence to make the claim. So your notes, that's all the evidence that we just talked about that you just wrote down. Um, you would then write a defensible claim. I'm gonna talk about how, and then you have to explain how or why. You have to support your claim. You have to say because, otherwise you're only making the AP readers half happy. All right, so this is a really good formula right here, a sample of acceptable claim. So if you say because of, so I'd write this in your notes, write down because of, and then you can just write the specific evidence so the specific evidence in our case is because of the artist is a court painter to the royal family in Spain, because of this being painted for the king in this painting would have hung in his studio, because of the Arnolfini, Arnolfini portrait being at the palace at the same time this painting was being created, or because of the king and the queen being reflected in the mirror on the back wall, art historians have interpreted Las Meninas as being painted from the perspective of the king and queen looking at the painting. So this is how that formula would work. And this is what the AP provided as an example. So art historians theorize that visual imagery such as the mirror with the king and the queen and context such as the placement of this portrait in King Philip's study suggests that the viewer is looking at the painting from the perspective of the king and the queen. So that is providing evidence and then making a claim. The claim is the viewer looking at the painting from the perspective of the king and the queen. But then your argumentation essay is going to ask for more. You have to support your claim with at least two examples of relevant visual or contextual evidence and explain how the evidence supports the claim. So this is where you have to go into more detail. So the video gave this detail that we're going to talk about. So we already talked about the, so the claim. Art historians theorize that visual imagery such as the mirror and the context, such as the placement of this being in the study, suggests the viewer is looking at the painting. Yep. All right. So more details you can include about the mirror. The mirror in this painting is similar to the mirror in Van Eyck's Arnolfini portrait. Both mirrors are central in the composition and reflect figures who are absent from the main scene. So again, that's giving more um, detail to your claim. Historians document Van Eyck's Arnolfini portrait as an artwork in the King's collection, so Velazquez would have seen it. So. This is what you would say. If Velazquez had seen the Arnolfini portrait, perhaps he suggests that we read his mirror the same way, that the king and queen are witnesses to the scene and are viewing the scene from our perspective, the perspective of the viewer. So that's one way to explain how or why. Here's another one, so same claim. So the painting hung in King Philip's study. Historians claim this painting was for Philip and that it was hung in his study, a private space. Philip is the intended audience. Philip is the father of the princess standing center stage, right? She is the main focus of the painting. Perhaps the princess in the painting, along with a few others, are staring fixedly at the viewer. Because the intended audience of this work was Philip, her father, only he and his wife could demand her attention. So it's using the gazes, the glances of the subjects as, um, the, as the evidence, right? Because they are fixedly looking at, at you, at the viewer. Therefore, that helps back up our claim. So the placement of this painting in Philip's private study and the claims that he was the intended audience reinforce the idea that the stairs are directed at him. The casual nature of the scene is something only he and his wife would have access to observe. So it's very informal. It's kind of just a snapshot moment um, 
that not everybody would be seeing. And then there's the dog that they talked about, the undisturbed Spanish Mastiff. The dog is very calm, he's relaxed, he's at rest, his snout is tucked into his chest, his eyes are closed. Iconography of dogs, we've talked about them representing loyalty and fidelity. Um, also in art history, they depict depicts them undisturbed when all is at peace and the people are familiar. Dogs appear awake and agitated when it encounters a stranger or something is new or wrong. If you're a dog owner, that makes sense, right? All right, based on trends in dog iconography and art history, the undisturbed nature of the dog suggests that the viewer whom the figures are engaged with is a member of the family. All right, so I want you guys to practice in your notes and I'm gonna look at your note page for this. So write this on the same note page for Las Meninas and you're gonna go back into your notes for Arno Fini portrait and you're gonna create a claim. So you're gonna say because of, you always have to say because, because of and give specific evidence about the Arno Fini portrait. What are some of the clues we talked about? Art historians have interpreted the Arno Fini portrait as what? And then you're making your claim. So just give that one formula sentence. You could do it on your Las Meninas notes because that's what you're gonna turn in for this assignment. All right, also we should be able to point out how this painting is characteristic of Baroque. So if you think back to Caravaggio um, and the idea of tenebrism, right? There's still a lot of darks here. It almost looks like there's a spotlight coming from the bottom right. It looks like the light is coming in through a window. Um, it's a very defined light source, but lots of contrast still between your lights and your darks. So it's chiaroscuro, which is modeling, but then it's, it's enhanced, it's emphasized, it's more black and white. So that is tenebrism. Top half is almost all in shadow. And then you have that backlit light source in the doorway, which we could also compare to the Last Supper. It's very centered almost too. All right, and then this is very informal. This is almost just like a snapshot, very unexpected in a royal portrait. You would assume they would all be standing and looking very formal and regal, but they're all just kind of in mid conversation and relaxed with each other. So again, the idea of it being just a quick snapshot, a moment in time is Baroque and then tenebrism is Baroque. And then if you also compare these two thinking about, they're both painted in oil paint, but very differently. There's a lot of comparisons you can make here. So on the right with Arnolfini portrait, uh, Jan van Eyck is all about the treatment of the surface and textures and being very smooth and realistic with the oil paint, blending it all together. And then Velazquez is using oil paint in a much more painterly way, right? He's using kind of quick gestural loose brush strokes to represent, like look, the hand just kind of blends together here. There's no detail defining the fingers. Um, so he's more about using the brush stroke and light to define the form. See these little like squiggles if you look up close and then those are highlights on the fabric. So this is a lot more painterly approach. Oh, and here's an example of appropriation. Appropriation is taking something that is not your own and recreating it to be your own. And this is Picasso uh, recreating this famous painting, Las Meninas, the Little Princess. All right, I am excited to read your claim. Have fun.